understanding was that the relationship between the, the royal brothers was on a better track um, than it was when Harry left. Um, I, I, I think they became closer during the lockdown, particularly when the Prince of Wales was not well. I was told the boys were in regular touch on the phone. We don't know whether they've spoken in light of this serialization and the many, many headlines that it has generated. But I think it's safe to say that this has done the relationship no help at all. I do know that the royal family's concern about this book was always that it was going to open up old wounds and I think it very much has done that just as they seem to have moved on from Mexit and from all the damage of, of earlier on this year suddenly this book has has reopened a Pandora's box and um, you know it, it's just not going away so I think this book and all of the revelations in it won't do anything to help um, the brothers' relationship which was on the road to repair. I don't think the relationship was ever back on track or as it once was, that things were getting better. One can only imagine that these devastating headlines um, alleging that Kate wasn't welcoming enough, that they didn't roll out the red carpet, that William was snobbish towards Meghan, that's not going to help a reconciliation between the royal princes. The book claims that this was very much a whirlwind romance that pretty much after two days, at Soho House, Harry knew that Meghan was the one and there was something special about Meghan. And as the authors in Finding Freedom put it, that she pretty much ticked every box. Harry was almost obsessed with Meghan and Meghan telling friends that she couldn't think about anything other than Harry, which I think gives some um, credence to to William's concerns that, that the relationship was moving very quickly. Um, and, you know, Harry obviously took great offense when William took him aside and, and, and told him to just make sure he was he was sure and things weren't moving too quickly, that he wasn't blinded by lust. You know, there's no doubt about it that this relationship was was passionate and immediate. And obviously that that was of concern to some members of the royal family that perhaps Harry was rushing into something. His head had been completely turned by this girl, as William referred to her. In Finding Freedom, one of the themes that seems to be recurrent is that Harry felt very much like a spare wheel. While the media loved this idea of a royal threesome, Kate, William and Harry, at points I heard him complaining that he felt like the gooseberry, you know, the third one along at the date, he never quite fitted in. And I think while Kate and William went out of their way to make sure Harry felt part of this team, part of this trio, everything from where they lived, um, you know, a stone's throw across a courtyard at Kensington Palace to a royal foundation that was the three of theirs. They tried very much to include him. Harry always wanted to be his own person. And I think Meghan has been the catalyst which has enabled Harry to break free from William and Kate and that trio, which was at times cozy and convenient, but actually wasn't really what Harry wanted. Harry's a very, very focused man has a very clear idea of what he wants to do. And that wasn't to be a spare wheel to William and Kate. He wanted to be his own person. And I think Meghan really gave him the confidence to break free. One of the things that, that is explored at length in the book is the palace politics. And it's, it's very clear that there are moments when the households are pitched against each other. I think it is fair to say that there is competition between the households. I'm not sure it's quite as cutthroat um, as perhaps some of the sensationalist stories might suggest. Um, but it is absolutely the case that the Palisades are out to represent and protect the principles who they are employed to look after. And by that very nature, you breed a competitiveness between the palaces. I mean, the idea was that there would be one communications team at Buckingham Palace to represent all members of the royal family. That was quite simply never going to work. William wanted his own court, which he set up at Kensington Palace. Charles has always had his own court at Clarence House. And one of the interesting things to come out of, of the new biography is that Meghan and Harry wanted their own court. 
at Windsor and they were told that couldn't happen. It had to be under the umbrella of the Queen's communications team at Buckingham Palace. And for them, that was a big disappointment because they didn't feel that they had the autonomy. And the fallout as such was that they felt that courtiers at Buckingham Palace didn't necessarily always have their best interests at heart. And there were a lot of politics um, at play. These were courtiers that the couple apparently referred to as vipers. And I think in that respect, it, uh, Harry and Meghan clearly felt that they were up against the palace machine that the prince, late Princess of Wales also complained um, was, was working against her. For Diana, they were the, the palace men in grey suits. For Meghan and Harry, they are the vipers who they felt were against Meghan from the start. Clearly, the way the couple handled their departure from the firm caused a lot of damage. And that is something that Finding Freedom explores. And I don't think it was a secret. It was no secret that the Queen, the senior members of the royal family were, were disappointed but deeply hurt by how Harry and Meghan chose to launch their departure from the royal family. But I think the family had moved on from that. I think after the Sandringham Summit, which was the first time William and Harry came together, um, having had a period where they weren't even speaking together, you know, there was an acceptance that this was what was going to happen. Harry and Meghan were going to start their new lives. And I think that they were on a path to moving on. The problem with this book is that it has busted open that old and still raw wound um, at a time when it was just beginning to heal. If Diana was here, she would be devastated to see her two sons, who were once so close, fall out um, so spectacularly. I think one of the things that has really struck me in the reading of these excerpts is the sadness that these two brothers, who were once inseparable, are now barely talking to each other. And I think if Diana was still here, she would get them together, knock their heads together and tell them to sort it out.